I'm happy today, I'm happy today in Jesus Christ. I'm happy today because He's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm happy today. I'm sharing my faith, I'm sharing my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm sharing my faith because He's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm sharing my faith. Welcome to Junior Church at North Valley Baptist Church. Do you have a Bible? Take your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 11. I'm excited to teach you today's lesson. It's amazing. The Bible's divided into chapters. I'm sorry, first books, and then chapters, and then verses. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 11, and then verse 1. We'll look at verse 4 shortly thereafter. It's an amazing story. Have you ever wondered where languages came from? Well, God tells us right here in the Bible. And then we're also going to talk to you a little bit about God's awful judgment for sin. Sin will always have a penalty. And I trust you'll listen very carefully today and you'll learn much. Would you like to pray with me? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for my church. Thank you for my Bible. Thank you for your truth. Now, God, help me to listen today, to learn something, and to live what I learn. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, And the whole earth was of one language, and of one speech. Skip down to verse 4. And they said, that was the people alive, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. The Bible tells us an amazing story in Genesis chapter 11. You see, long ago... God confounded the languages. God created languages because man didn't do what God said. God said, I want you to go and replenish the entire earth. But they stayed together and they decided they would build a great tower that would reach all the way to heaven. And they foolishly thought they could build a tower that would actually reach up to God. And God looked down on man and he saw that they were doing everything they could to do wrong. And God said, all right, I can fix that. And that's why God made languages. Now, you can believe what God says or you can believe what man says. I've written down some of the crazy ideas that they have for how language came up. They tell us that we came from monkeys. You've heard that story. And they say that languages were a result of some crazy things. You see, if we all came from one monkey, why don't we all speak monkey? Why do we speak some of us French, some of us Swedish, some of us Spanish, and other languages? Why do we speak different languages if we all came from the same monkeys? Well, evolution can't really tell you why. But they came up with some ideas, and I want to show you what they say. How about the Bow Wow Theory? That is literally what they call it. I'm not making it up. They call it the Bow Wow Theory or the Cuckoo Theory, which Mueller attributed to the German philosopher Johann Herder. And he saw in the early words as imitations of the noises made by birds and beasts. Yeah, our language is Bow Wow, Bow Wow. Oh, for heaven's sakes. How about the Poo Poo? Yeah, everybody knows the Poo Poo Theory. They thought that maybe it was emotional interjections and exclamations triggered by pain or by pleasure or surprise. 
So when you hit your hand with a hammer, you said, ow, and ow became a word. I don't know how, but that's the poo-poo theory. I like this one, the ding-dong theory. Yeah, you see it. That's really what they call it. And they state that all things have a vibrating natural resonance echoed somehow by man in the earliest words. So all the languages are related to their gibberish, noise. The yo he ho you can do the yo he ho That thinks that our language came from rhythmic labor. As they work, they attempt to synchronize muscular efforts with their hands, and they copied that with their tongue. So as they were moving, they moved their tongue. I don't know how you make words out of that, but this is the yo he ho theory. And then the ta-ta theory. Of course, everybody knows the ta-ta theory. I really did look these up. These are in Wikipedia. If you don't believe me, you can look them up yourself. I left the notes there for you. According to the ta-ta theory, humans made the earliest words by tongue movements that mimicked manual gestures, rendering them audible. So if they did this, Somehow this was, hello, I don't know how to copy this with your tongue. It doesn't seem the same to me, but okay, that's the ta-ta theory. That's how they believe languages came to best. I suggest to you that's absolute foolishness, that God created man in his own image, and the Bible says God created language. Well, God created language as a result of punishment for sin. Man would not obey and do what God said. And so he separated man into groups by using language. They couldn't understand each other. I want you to understand something about sin. First of all, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That means because of our sin, we are separated from God. We can't go to heaven. No sin is going into heaven unless that sin is taken care of. There is a penalty for sin. But many of you that are out here have been saved and you ask Jesus into your heart. and He's washed away that sin and he's paid for that penalty. But that doesn't mean you don't sin. Christians sometimes lie. Christians sometimes cheat. Christians sometimes are lazy. And the list goes on. Christians do every sin that the Ten Commandments mentions. Does that mean we lose our salvation? No. Because Jesus said, Whosoever believeth in him, John 3, 16, should not perish but have everlasting life. See, once Jesus takes care of that sin, that part of sin penalty is gone for eternity. When I do wrong... It doesn't take away my heaven. I'll still die and go to heaven. So you say, well, then sin must be free. Oh, no. Sin still costs. It won't take away our eternity, but it will judge us here on this earth. There are two judgments from sin. First, we have the eternal judgment, and that's hell for eternity. Now, when I got saved, that penalty was taken away. But there's still earthly judgment. God still deals with sin. Let me show you. There's a natural sin process. God says in the book of James, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. There's a natural process for sin. First you see it, or you taste it or you hear it, or you want it. And then you do it. And then you pay for it. Yes, every single sin will be paid for. I know I'm still going to heaven, but that does not eliminate the effects of sin. It will affect us. Let me show you. Sometimes sin just brings misery. If I choose as a Christian to smoke, and I want to smoke, smoke, smoke those cigarettes, I can't blame God when I get lung cancer. It was a result of my sin. Maybe I'm a Christian. Heaven forbid I decide that I want to drink alcohol. I, may, I become an alcoholic. 
Well, I can't blame God when my kidneys rot out. You see, that's a natural result of the misery from sin. Being saved, you'll get to go to heaven, but it's not going to give you a new pair of kidneys for your wickedness. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not losing my eternity. I'm simply paying for my sin. And the most common judgment for sin is to simply let sin bring out its own fruit. And the fruit of sin is always judgment. It's always misery. Sometimes God will send a natural disaster. It's not common, but sometimes God will send an earthquake. I think God is sending today a coronavirus to get man's attention to wake up and say, we're not doing right. We need to change our ways. God is trying to get the attention of America. He'll use floods like down in Florida. He'll use storms. There are firestorms across California. Even today, there's still fires. There's all kinds of natural disasters that God is trying to say, wake up, look at this. And sometimes God will use a miracle, miraculous change, like at the Tower of Babel, where he reached down and said, you won't obey? I'll split your languages, and you will have to go all over this earth. Or at the flood with Noah, when God said, I am so tired of their sin, I will destroy this earth. And only Noah and his family lived to talk about it. Or sometimes God will call down fire from heaven in Elijah's day. God can do great miracles, but they're not very common. God can do natural disasters. More common than these, but not very common. But that misery, that's the most common way God judges sin. So as a Christian, I don't want to sin because I don't want to pay for it. If you've got a problem with a lying tongue or a disobedient spirit or you don't want to do something that you know is good, it's not free. Well, I'm a Christian. I'm going to go to heaven. Yes, you are. But you might just pay for it on this earth. I hope you recognize that God has an awful judgment. Sin is an awful thing. There's also the final judgment. The final judgment is where God looks in the book of life. And if your name is not written in that book of life, he says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And you'll be cast into a lake of fire for eternity. If you're a Christian, you won't face that judgment. But if you're not, there's a final judgment waiting. And if you're listening today and you say, Brother Kerry, I need to get saved, but not today. I'll put it off. You may want to get saved today. Because Jesus just might come today. And you'll be facing that eternal judgment without a second chance. Well, here's the way the story goes. Man was cocky and man said, you know what? We don't want to do what God said. God said we're supposed to move and spread out, but we don't want to do that. We're going to build a great tower. And man has great abilities. God made him very wise. But it's so foolish to think that we can shake our thumbs, shake our fist in the face of God and say, I'll do it my way. And so they decided to build a great tower. I really don't know how big it was. But they built a tower that went way up into the sky. And they thought they could reach all the way to heaven, which we know is foolishness. And they said, God, we're not doing what you said. We're going to do it our way. And God looked down from heaven and said, uh-huh. No, you won't. And God touched their tongue. And suddenly, one began to speak in Italian and one began to speak in Arabic and one began to speak in French and one began to speak in Swahili and another began to speak in Spanish and they couldn't understand each other anymore 
groups could understand each other, families could understand each other, but suddenly one family could not talk to another. And in that confusion, they tried everything they could to try to get communication back and forth, but they couldn't understand each other. And they had no choice but to separate and move their families to the other places. God had already told them, just do it. But they didn't want to listen. And so that's where God made languages. And God will judge sin. It'll never be free. I want you to remember, as you've listened to this lesson today from the book of Genesis, chapter 11, there is a natural process for sin. Be careful when you start looking at it, saying, I wish I could. You're only around the corner for sin. God says, flee youthful lusts. Stay away from them. Pass not by it. Go from it. Stay out of the way. But if you say, no, I want to warm myself up next to sin. I won't do it. I'll just think about it. Pretty soon, you'll do it. And when you do, you can look at judgment. You say, no, 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 I've been lying and getting away with it. You're not getting away with it. God is patient. And one day soon, you're going to lie and get away with it and 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 lie and get away with it. And, and, with it. and then you're going to pay in full. Just like a credit card. God gave you a chance to repent. If you've got a bad habit with your temper, oh, you can get away with it, you think. But God said, the wages of sin is death. You say, I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven. Yes, you will, but you may get there early. You can't go out, steal somebody's car, go driving, have no idea what you're doing, drive it into a telephone pole and blame God because you went to heaven early. Don't play with sin. The devil is the expert at being a deceiver. He'll say, oh, you won't have to worry about it. It's okay. Look, you're getting away with it. Did they get away with it? No, God is patient. And God sees everything I do and everything you do. It's so important that we take care of our sin. What do we do with our sin as a Christian? Well, God says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't confess sin to God so we can go to heaven again. But we do confess sin to God so we can have fellowship together again. It's like your mom and dad. If you do something wrong or you get punished, you're embarrassed. But when your parents bring you back in and give you a hug, it's just like it's a brand new relationship. You can have that relationship with God all the time. You say, but I did it, and I, I confessed it, and I did it, and I did it again. God is patient, and God will forgive you. And God wants you to be working toward getting victory over that sin. And I hope you can get victory over that sin. I want you to think about this, and I want you to pray right now. If you died today, or if Jesus came right now, would you have to pay for your sin in eternity? Or have you asked Jesus into your heart? If you've asked him into your life, he has washed that sin away. You're on your way to heaven. Now, we don't want to live in sin. If you're a Christian and you're playing with sin, recognize it'll still cost you something. It just won't cost you eternity. And our sin and bad habits are so important for us to get under control and ask God to help us to live right and do right. And I want you to pray and ask God right now. You say, brother, talk to God and maybe say, God, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. But I got this awful bad habit. And God, would you help me with it? And I want to pray with you right now. I can't pray for your need. I don't know your need. But you can pray that prayer. Let me pray now. Dear Jesus, I'd ask that you'd help each one who listens to recognize there is an awful 
price for sin. And then, God, I pray all of us will be saved and on our way to heaven. And yet, Lord, as Christians, we all sin. I have sinned too many times. But your loving mercy has forgiven me. Now, that forgiveness often takes care of it all, but sometimes I still have to pay that penalty. And Lord, I pray that these young people that listen today would keep their lives free from most of that sin. And I pray they might never have to taste the awful judgment for sin. God, help us to act like you did. Help us to do right. Help us to love your book and to love you more, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Have you got a brother or sister there? Let's see how much you remember. All right, let's see. Two kinds of sin judgment. Did you pay attention? There are two kinds of sin judgment. What are they? Well, there's eternal judgment and there's earthly judgment. Remember? And there's a natural sin process. What's the first thing that happens? Remember, it's an L word. It's lust. That means to want it. This one's easy. What comes next? After lust comes sin. And I think you know the next one. What comes after sin? Judgment. Good job. What are the wages of sin? You're right. It's death. Can you tell me some earthly judgments for sin? What kind of things does God do to punish our sin? What have you said? Natural disasters, or miraculous change, or final judgment, or tornadoes, or hurricanes, or earthquakes, or all of those things. You're right. Many of those are judgment for sin. Why did God create languages? Because of man's disobedience. Ladies and gentlemen, you have learned today where languages came from, and you learned today how God will always judge sin. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll listen again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.